it finally the last video, and then I'm going to go watch the Met game with my dad. Today's not a good day. The Red Sox won twice. It looks like the Mets are winning and the Yankees lost, so they better win Friday, otherwise your teacher's going to be unhappy. Um, okay. So this is a summary of finding the units of K. If you want to remember, like, we'll have a way to memorize them instead of doing the math. Again, I don't recommend this. So for zero-order reactions, the units are always the same as the rate, which is molarity per second. For first-order reactions, um, the units are always seconds to the negative one. Um, and then for second-order reactions, seconds to the negative one, but then it's molarity to the negative one. The power of, mo except for zero-order reactions, the power that the molarity that the molarity is is raised to is one less than the order of the reaction. So since the so if like this is just to help you memorize it. So if like so if this is a first order reaction, so molarity is not there because if you subtract one, like the molarity goes away. I mean this is just a way to remember it. So third order reactions would would be second to the minus one. Second is always to the minus one. Molarity to the negative two. You can get fourth level fourth order reactions, but that's rare. And it's still seconds to the negative one, but this time it would be molarity to the negative three. So the, the the molarity power is always one less than the order of the reaction. It's just negative. Um, so that's one way you can remember it if you don't feel like um, doing the math of the, the units there. I mean, so if you want to check yourself, or what would a fifth order reaction be? Which is extremely rare, but could happen. Um, so it's always seconds to the minus one, but the molarity would be to the negative fourth power. Um, there. Alright. So the last thing that we, if we have a reaction, so we've only been, we've only been looking at reactions that have one reactant. So if we are, um, looking at reactions that have more than one reactant, um, we have to, we have to look for both, we have to determine both the order of A and B. So what's your, let's say we wanted to define, we wanted to find the, the, um, the, what they call it, the order of the reaction, so order of reaction with respect to A. So what you would do is you would find a place in the, in the, um, in the, um, data where B is, is staying constant. So here's a, a place where, you know, we're not seeing the effect of B because B is constant, but we're doubling the, um, we're doubling the concentration of A. And here, what are we doing to the rate? Well, we're multiplying it by four. So since we are like, since it's not, this is whenever you, um, double the, um, double the concentration, but the rate doesn't also double, it goes up by more, it quadruples. That's a, a, uh, a, um, second order reaction. So with the order of the reaction with respect to A is two. And if we look at it with respect to B, we find an area where it's not changing in, it, where the concentration of A is not changing and that's there. And here the concentration of B is doubling and we notice that the rate doesn't change. So the order of the reaction with respect to B is zero because the concentration of B doesn't affect the rate. So if we were going to write the rate law, the rate law would be equal to the rate constant K only times the concentration of A raised to the second power. B is not in the rate law because it is zero order, which means it doesn't affect the rate of the reaction. All right, so now we did that. Um, so now let's see also. So it says now determine K with units. So I'm just going to do that up here. Um, you can, because I have more space up here, and I, I can see the work at the same time, where I think you guys have it on the same page, so you don't have to go back up and forth. Um, yeah, yeah, you actually do. So I'm just going to pick um, any number. It doesn't matter. I'm going to pick one that's easy. I'm actually going to pick when A is 1, because it makes the math easier. So we know that the rate, so I'm, I'm going to erase all my lovely drawings here. And then go back to the drawing. And I feel like writing a different color. So let's write in this color here. All right. So I'm going to choose to calculate it for this one. It doesn't matter which one. The answer is going to be the same. Because I know the reason why I'm using that one is the math is easy. So the rate is 0 0.008. And we're trying to find K. And the concentration of K is 1. 
and one squared is just one, right? So you square one, you get one. So now I divide both sides by one, okay? And I get k is equal to 0 0.008. Again, I, I picked the third one, but you would get, the, if you want to check, you, if you, would do, you would get the same answer for k if you picked any experiment to do it with. But I do need the units. So again, I'm gonna again. You couldn't say, "Oh, well, this is this rate. This rate is second order." So and I, I can remember the units, but I'm gonna show you how you get that on the side. So again, the rate is meters. Uh, meters. I'm, I feel like I'm in um, physics. Molarity per second. Right. We're trying to find for k, and since we have a squared, it's the molarity squared. We end up dividing both sides by molarity squared. Molarity squared cancels, and then again, remember when you're dividing. It's molarity over seconds times the inverse when something's on the bottom. This M cancels, you're left with 1 on the bottom. So you get 1 over seconds times molarity, which is more commonly written as seconds to the negative 1, molarity to the negative 1. Um, are the units there? So and so now, so I did that. I had half K and I have the units. Again, usually the units are 1 point. Now it says, now determine the initial rate of the reaction with the initial concentrations of A being 12 and B being 0.43. So I'm going to write the rate law. So I have the rate. I now know what K is. It's 0 0.008. And I have the concentration of A. And I'm squaring it. B does not go into the rate law because it's zero order with relate to the B. So it does not um, relate to the rate. So then I simply multiply those numbers together. Remember to do the square first and then multiply by 0 0.008. And the rate is 0 0.00012 and rate is always, always, always molarity per second. And again, that kind of, I know that seems like a really small rate, but if you're looking, you're starting at a concentration of A at 0.12. And in the graph, we're not anywhere near 0.12. We're much, we, we start with a concentration of 0.5 in the graph and look how low the rate is. So it makes sense that the rate would be lower than the thing on the table. All right, last one. And then we have like some summary slides. So we, again, we need to find, we need to write the rate law. So we need to find a spot on the chart. We'll find with BR2 where NO, NO is staying the same. So here NO is staying the same, um, but BR is doubling and the rate is also doubling. So that means it's first order. So if we write the rate, so rate is equal to the K times the concentration of BR2 to the first power, because when you double, when you're, when, keep, when you're keeping the other reactant um, constant, when you double the concentration, you also double the rate. So now we're going to look for the same thing. Where, is it, where does um, BR2 stay constant? Well, you, can, you can use anywhere it stays constant. So it stays constant here, and we're doubling the rate of NO. And we see, if we look at the rates, this is being multiplied by 4. The exponent is staying the same, um, but 11.2 times 4 is 44.8. So since we're doubling the concentration but quadrupling the rate, um, this is in the this, this is second order with related to that. And the last thing it wants us to do is to determine the units. So I will show you the math, or you could just memorize what a third order reaction is. So the rate is always in meters per second. We have K, and then these are all molarities. This is a molarity, and this is molarity uh, square, uh, squared. So the molarities end up being cubed, because there's like three molarities. Divide both sides by molarity cubed. And then molarity seconds times one over molarity cubed. Molarities cancel. There's two of these left. We get one over seconds times molarity squared. Um, which, if you, which is also equivalent to seconds to the min minus one, molarity to the minus two. And again, once we said, when we, when we sum we're summarizing the, um, the units, this is a third order reaction because this is to the first order and this is to the second order to the respect with each reactant. So it's overall third order. Um, and again, whenever you're writing the units, it's all, it's seconds is always to the negative one. This negative one always stays. And the molarity is one less than the order of the reaction. So this is a third order reaction overall. The molarity is one less, um, and it's negative. Um, if you want to memorize how to get the unit that way. 
Um, okay, so again, this is just a summary, and we're sort of done at this point. So again, we sort of, this is, we just wrote the rate law. So this equation is called the rate law. K is the rate constant, and the exponents are the reaction orders, and we just determined that it was first order with respect to B2, and it was second order with respect to NO. The overall reaction order, which we, I just said, can be found by adding the exponents. So because this is first order, and this is second order, overall the reaction is third over, because 1 plus 2 is 3. So in our last part is that, so just to sort of summarize, to find the overall reaction order, you sum the exponents. So it says a reaction has an overall weight law of rate equals K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. What is the overall, um, overall reaction order? So remember, this is to the first power. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. If it was to the zero power, A wouldn't, or was a zero order to A, A wouldn't be there. We add the exponents, 1 plus 2. That's 3. So this reaction overall is third order. And if you memorize how to get your units, the units of K would be seconds to the minus 1. And then the mol since the third order, molarity to the minus 2, 1 less than the overall order. All right. This is the last video. All you have left to do, all you have left to do is to practice AP exam. See you guys on Monday.